So climate change, right? Climate change isn't a distant threat anymore. It's here, it's happening now. So it is said that the planet is trying to talk to us through the language of climate change crisis so that uh, we can understand. And it is high time we start listening to that. So let me ask you a question. Whom do you think is the most affected due to the climate change crisis? Any, cr any guesses or something? Everyone. Exactly. But uh, I can give you three options. So is it the majestic polar bear standing on a land of melting ice? without no options to be getting out? Or is it the great coral reef, which is dying now, which was once beautiful and lively, now it is lifeless and ghostly? And then comes the third one, is it the magnificent tigers who are fighting for their survivals in the, sub, sub, the suburban jungles? You know. So these are the common images that we associate with the climate change. But I right now invite you to look inside your home that is, your own children. Look carefully inside their eyes. If you, if you kind of understand, the mental struggles, what they are actually facing, is much more bigger than any other thing, which I would say. So when it comes to uh, a buzzword, so climate change crisis has always been associated with all these things, which is normally associated with the ecosystem and the animals. So right now, I'm taking you into a world beyond the melting ice, beyond the endangered tigers, and beyond the dying corals, I think there is a silent crisis which has been existing there. That is the mental health of our children, whom we care the most, whom we love the most, and whom we are living. And we are going to give the planet to them. They are going to inherit this planet after us, right? So my name is Abhishek Shashidharan. I'm not an environmental science expert. But being an educator and a passion mentor, I'm, my real concern is for the future generation, who is going to be inheriting the planet from us. So when I talk about uh, my, co my company, because uh, quitting my engineering career in Dubai seven years back, I had only one dream in order to help the young generation to get moving with their life. Because I felt that the, one of the biggest issues in this world has to be sorted was the education system. Because when it comes to the education system, most of us, most of us went through that system we all faced a lot of issues. Even the present generation is also facing it. It's still not solved. So I really wanted to contribute to that. That is why I started the world's first passion research and development center. So when it comes to this, I being conducting a lot of classes. I work closely with the children. I work closely with school students, college students. And what I really found out was they are fighting a bigger battle than most of the bigger adults. They're really fighting a bigger battle. I'm really concerned. They are the ones who are very much affected. When it comes to uh, the passion development sessions, what I contact, and the psychometric analysis, what I contact, what I found out that out of three out of 10 students, because I do contact psychometric analysis and different personality tests in terms of my passion development pro programs, and what I really found out was three out of every 10 students faced eco-anxiety. And what is eco-anxiety? It is an anxiety or a fear which is derived from the fear about ecosystem, what they are living in. So this is the, this is the immediate crisis which we have to solve before solving any other things. So climate change is not just a buzzword. It is always termed as a buzzword, right? And it is not just a buzzword. It is more than that. What is climate change? It is a rapid shift in the weather patterns, often described as the global rising of the temperature, right? And uh, there can be different attitudes to that. So when it comes to the rising sea levels, to the scorching heat waves, when it comes to the droughts, to the erratic storms, the evidence is all around us. Climate change is not just about changing the climate. Climate change is about changing the world, what we are living in. And it's about our children too. Because uh, the anxiety, the depression, the sense of profound sense of loss, it's been growing big shadows in their lives from a long time. Believe me, when I started working this with these people, I really found out that there is a lot of issues in the education system to be solved. Maybe uh, they are not getting time with their passions. They are not getting time to explore what are they are built with, what is their inner calling. But seriously, when I went closer, when I went deeper, I really found out, along with the defects in the education system, there are many other issues, just like climate cri change crisis, which is limiting them putting them into intense traumas, and 
in some or the other way, growing big shadows in their lives. So when it comes to this, most of the issues are unspoken, unaddressed, and unknown. So uh, today, right now, I'm standing before you not to just talk about the ecosystems and the animals, which almost all the climate change activists actually talk about. I'm here to talk about the coming generation who are living in this warming world, who have to be taken care of. It is, it is something which I think we have to do as an immediate solution. So um, you can actually think back to your own childhood, right? We all had a childhood. We all had a childhood. And we all had beautiful memories. Can you imagine growing up with a sense of fear and an uncertainty that the present kids are actually facing? How would it have shaped many of our lives and dreams and way of living and role plays and plays, games? Do you think if we would have lived in that way, what the present kids are facing, would it have affected us a lot? So th uh, there is a ripple effect for this, you know? See, you, let's, uh, let us imagine a farmer who has lost his crops to an unpredictable weather. Or a coastal community who has a lot of constant threats, sea threats. Some of the other way, this ripple effect is affected to the envi this environmental changes is affecting as a ripple effect, and it is affecting the economy, the health, the way of living of every individual. Now let us take it a step further, right? Let us talk about the kids who are living with this farmer and the coastal community. How do they feel? They are feeling hearing the news about climate change. They are hearing uh, feeling the anxiety. What we are yet to uh, yet to understand. And what exactly happens is, it has been, again, again, a lot, a lot unspoken. So we all have memories of play, uh, childhood, right? We all played outside in the nature. We all had a lot of memories, uh, the grass beneath our feet, the wind which is actually in, into our hairs. So this was a beautiful memory. When, when we all think about our childhood, we all had that nature, naturalistic way of enjoyment. Right now, how many kids are enjoying that freedom in the outdoors. How many kids are getting an exposure to the nature? It's a big question. It's a big question. I think it's high time we start questioning this because most of the climate change crisis, including the floods, the rising sea levels, the heat waves, everything, they're not allowed to go out. So what can we do to restore the nature connection of our kids like before? That is the very important question which I have to ask. So uh, along with this, I have to tell a story of a young boy. It's a real life event. I don't want to call it a story, but I, I would love to do a storytelling right now. So I want to tell a story about a young boy named Arjun, who lived in a rain-socked, lush hill station in Kerala. And um, his place was so beautiful. His region was full of valleys, greenery, and everything. And behind that uh, beauty, there lied a dangerous reality. The land had a massive land, uh, landslide threats. On a, on a f uh, especially on the monsoon season, you know. So on a fateful night, one night, the massive landslide tore through Arjun's village. Arjun's home was situated at the base of the hill, which, so for that reason, it couldn't stand against the destructive muds and rocks. So what as a result happened was, in a fraction of seconds, Arjun's house got vanished and it became under the muds and rocks. So let me tell it, fortunately or unfortunately, Arjun was not there at the home. He went to visit his par parents' relatives. He was there the previous day. So when this disaster happened, he was not there at home. So when he came to know this unbearable truth, it was very difficult for him to understand the family which he owned is no more. There is nobody to love and take care of him anymore. There is nobody so that he can show his love and care from now on. So this, this tragic event, this trauma, created long-lasting, deep impacts on young Arjun's psych, the psychology. So what exactly happened was, he actually started thinking a lot. He had nightmares about that drastic event. The, uh, he, he had trust, trust issues. The trust issues ruled his mind. He had uh, issues with uh, getting, again, in a fear of losing the dear ones when it comes to uh, again and again, that memory is actually popped up. And his resilience was tested every single time with small, small memories of rain, or the sound of rain, the visual effects of hills, or the very earth which actually sustained him and destroyed his family. 
So there was this community and NGOs and the local people who helped Arjun. Really, that's the beauty of humanity, right? When something really bad happens to us, we all are together. How much ever we fight, we all are together. We, the native people really helped Arjun. They were his saviors. The NGOs came into the picture. They provided him shelter, education, everything that a student, a young boy needed. But when it comes to that dangerous reality, his fight was, his battle with that event was much more than any of the NGOs or ba any, any native people could help. Because the native people and NGOs saw their own losses and griefs in Arjun's eyes. So they really wanted the boy to come out of it and they did everything they could do in order to make it happen. But, you know, there is actually something called mental health struggle, which all this money, all these materialistic things cannot solve. So that is exactly what we are talking about. So Arjun's life, Arjun's story is a significant reminder for how human, what is the human cost of climate change crisis. So this actually calls for action. We really need empathy. We really need com community engagement. We really need mental health support. That is the high need. It's a high requirement right now to be implemented. So this is one of the silent creeping crises right now, which has to be solved. So right now I have talked about what is climate change, how it is affecting. So right now I want to connect what climate change and how the mental health issue is being directly connected. Evidently, in direct way, there is no connection at all, right? Most of the kids actually think that his future is tinged, is connected with fear and uncertainty. That is a big feeling which we, like privileged people like most of us, like us, may not know what exactly that feels like. I'm really, I'm really very much concerned about the young generation because the way how it is going to have affect the future and the future climate change and everything, it is going to be very drastic. So imagine explaining a child how, the, how his favorite um, animal or bird is an endangered species. Just imagine. You explaining, okay, uh, your favorite animal is this. Okay, it's an endangered species. How would you feel, first of all? How would they feel? And how can we, what can we do to make sure the things are restored like before, at least 10 to 15, or I know it's been happening from a lot of years, decades and everything, but again, at least 10 to 15 years before, how can we make it back? So when I talk about the climate change crisis and the connection with mental health, I have to talk about two things. One is anxiety and one is the uncertainty, right? So when we actually talk about, uh, the, they, when the children actually hear about the news of uh, floods, the landslides, the heat, uh, scorching heat waves and everything, we really have to understand the, in their mind voice, what they are thinking is, in 10 or 20 or 30 years, what will be the world, what they are living in is going to be. That is a disturbing thought process for a young child, maybe 10 to 15 years or anything. I don't think even an adult cannot face it. It's a very dangerous thought process. But I can think about a 10 to 15 years or 5 to 15 years student who is actually going for it. So it is again, uh, I mean, a silent creeping crisis, right? So second thing, what I'm going to talk about is the loss and grief. Just like how I told about the story of Arjun. Arjun was a young boy, he was very happy with his life, he was very happy with all the privileged, privileges he had. But again, one fraction of second, a fraction of second, his life turned upside down. And the loss and grief, what he was facing, it was very difficult for him to actually come out of it. I, as per my understanding, there are many kids who are still not able to, even after being an adult, they're still not able to come out of that trauma and stress and anxiety or anxiety disorders. It's a disorder. We have to treat it. See, just like how uh, when we get a cancer, phys any physical uh, diseases, if we get a cancer or a fever, we go to a doctor, right? We go to a doctor, we treat it, we get medicines. Just like that, if somebody is getting a mental health issue, we really need to go to a consultant, maybe a mental health expert, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. See, I think that is what the call for right now. Climate change is not usually linked with mental health. So that is what we are doing right now in this TEDx event. And I'm happy that I could actually do that here. So when we talk about the loss and grief and the anxiety, we have to talk about something else also. There, some of the children are converting their concerns into actions. You won't believe there are many kids who are really upset about the climate change which is happening right now, and they're really taking actions against it. 
And I don't know whether they are, they are actually embracing their responsibilities. They are actually making sure uh, they actually call for climate strikes. They really are doing many things in order to make it happen. But don't you think that it is too much for a young mind to bear? So I can actually tell you an example of Greta Thunberg. I am very sure all of the climate activists would have, I mean, though globally, everybody knows about her, Greta Thunberg. She was a 16-year-old girl who put out a strike in front of Swedish parliament as a small movement, and that small movement turned into a big global movement, and a lot of kids and young advocates are fighting for the same cause. You won't believe what is the inspiration and uh, how to say, see, such an inspiring girl she was. She is. She is actually still doing a lot of things. She's calling for action. She's supporting. Her sentiments is echoing a lot. People are, even the adults, even the young advocates, everybody is going on the same path of Greta Thunberg. Such an inspiring girl. So what exactly I feel about that is, it is, it actually, the sentiments actually echoes a lot. When, when the Greta Thunberg, a 16-year-old girl, really told one statement when she really wanted to do this. What was it? I really want to make a difference. But I sometimes feel that the whole world is against us. It's overwhelming. Don't you think a, such an inspiring girl who is 16 years old is, along with doing such great works, she's actually kind of telling this statement along with her action, how disturbing it should be, how shameful we should be, the adults, including me. Because we as a person, we as the previous generation, uh, the 16-year-old is actually the upcoming generation, if she is doing that many things, and she is putting out a statement also, how disturbing it is for her as the world is against her. So that is something which I really want to talk about. And one more thing, along with every young adv advocates, what we have to notice is, if, if uh, somebody is showing that much responsibility, what exactly we should actually focus on is, it, we should actually support them so that their source of passion should be the source of burnout. Because most of the kids doesn't have that much energy to fight for such a global cause. I don't think any single person or an adult also have it. If we are a group, if the whole humankind is working together, only we can some, make some changes or difference. So what about only the young generation is actually fighting for it? It's going to be very difficult. So what exactly I have to put it here is, we have to focus on hope and challenge. What is an open challenge? When young advocates are coming up with such inspiring activities, there is a hope about the planet. I'm very much hopeful when it comes to yeah, all the many young advocates are doing this much in order to make sure the planet is going to be the safer place. At the same time, it's a challenge as well. Why? Because these are the kids who are supposed to play. These are the kids who are supposed to learn. These are the kids who are supposed to have a funful childhood so that they can be a better version of themselves when they're grown up. So when they're putting out this much energy in a young age instead of their playful time, I think it's a serious threat, serious shameful threat to the existing adults as well. So one more statement, what I want to add here is, if these people, including Greta Thunberg, if they could do this many things at such a young age, if we give the proper support, if we give the proper platform, if we give the proper environment, I think they can do crazy things there. They can do un unimaginable things. So, right now, I want, to, I just told you how mental health, how the climate change is connected with the mental health, right? Of the children. At the same time, there is one reversible formula as well. How the mental health of today's children is going to affect the futuristic climate. So how does it affect? For example, if you have a, I mean, a traumatic childhood, if you have a, burnout that you kind of actually have a lot of traumas you put a, put out a lot of energy into climate change or any in any other way if your mental health was affected in your childhood when you grow up you are most likely to become a person who look for quicker results you know you don't care about the future because nobody cared for you you don't care about the sustainability because when you grow up it was not there you had to put a lot of hard works to do, make it happen so when that thing is happening, you tend to become a person who wanted quicker results. What do you mean by quicker, quicker results? You want today to be, to be sorted. You don't think about tomorrow. And when that happens, think uh, how much damage tomorrow, today's kids can make into the planet in the tomorrow. So that is a very important topic which I want to actually add here. 
So I am very sure that uh, a lot of people are working towards this common cause. Before moving into the conclusion, I want to give you a small story about a rich dad and a wise son. I'm sure many of them would have already heard it. So once a rich dad really wanted to, he was very rich, he had all the amenities, all the facilities. He wanted to really show his son how does it work like, okay, how much fortunate you are, how much fortunate you should be in your life when it comes to making sure you work for your, more for your wealth or your fortune. So he took his son to a nearby village, which is a poor village, and he wanted his son to live there so that he can have more insights about the world and how fortunate he is. And when that happened, they, they lived there. They re literally lived there. They had two, three nights, and they literally enjoyed. And when they're going back in the car, the rich dad really wanted to make a proud moment, and he actually asked his son, Son, what do you think? What did you learn today or in the last three days? Did, what, did you understand how the poor people live? And then the son is like, yeah, dad, I understood how they live. W okay, what did you understand? What are the learnings? What you got from uh, that particular trip? Then the son replied, dad, I'm so happy that I went there. So they had three dogs and what we had was one dog. They had um, big stars in the sky and what we have is the imported lanterns, that the normal lamps in our Bangalore. We had lawns which was ending only till the gate. They had endless gardens and outside landscapes for them to visit. We buy our food, they grow their food. We have walls to protect us. They have friends and family to protect them. We spend our f uh, free time with television and mobiles. And they spend their free time with family and friends and neighbors. And the rich dad who was supposed to get another answer was in turn learned with another fact. That means what the young generation should be getting is the availability and how much we have as a natural resource, how much we can connect to the nature, how much we can encourage and educate them to make sure that life is out there. There is a lot of resources which you have to be connected. Human beings are a social animal. We are supposed to live in the nature. We have to make sure our nature is sustainable for that. And at the same time, as we as most of the environmentalist speaks, I don't think nothing is going to happen for the environment. It will be only bad. If you are making it bad, it will, it will be only a place which will not be a place for human beings to live. It will survive, but we won't survive. So this is the quick uh, lesson which we have to teach our kids. We have to educate. We have to aware, make them aware. So what I would suggest here is, from the mere awareness, we should go to empathy. From policy making, we should go to nurturing. From the fear, we should go to support and guidance. This is what my calling is for. So, as a conclusion, I feel environmental issue is not just an environmental issue, it's a mental health issue. So, I feel that there is a lot of kids out there who really look forward to us as a support. They don't want us to do anything. They want us to celebrate their small victories. They want us to support whatever they are doing. They want us to understand the fact that they are embracing the responsibility and the planet is in safe hands. But as a previous generation, there are many things we have to do. And not as a promise, it, it, is, it, it shouldn't be like a promise to the threat. It should be a promise to make sure we will be there for the younger generation to support and make sure that they are going to be making a future planet in a more sustainable way. So before ending my topic and my talk in this TEDx event, which I'm very grateful for, so that I can connect globally with my thought process, being an educator, I'm happy that I address one more issue, what the children and educate, uh, education system is facing, that is the lack of awareness or empathy for environmental issue, because the future has to be in safer hands. And one statement may, I'm actually concluding the words, the previous generation didn't do it for us, we have to do it for the future generation. That's all. This is Abhishek Shashidharan. Thank you so much.